Time for our first bonus review, which I am so, so sad I've not had a chance to watch yet because it looks very up my street. It's The Three Musketeers, D'Artagnan. Yes. No, this Actually, is... Actually, it, it doesn't... It's not D'Artagnan, is it? D'Artagnan. 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 D'Artagnan, yeah. So this is the first of a two-part adaptation of the Alexandre Dumas novel. Uh, look, cinema is not short of adaptations of this Alexandre Dumas novel, but <laughs> or weirdly... TV this is the uh, first French attempt to adapt it in more than 60 years, which I was completely astonished That's interesting, by. interesting, yeah. So it's cropped up a lot in English language versus over the other. The last kind of major one was the Paul W. Sanderson one. Not very good. It was 2011. In 2011, mm-hmm. yes. So this is a, a, a peculiar production because it's uh, it costs sixty three million to pounds to to put together, but but in in the euro equivalent, which is a lot of money for a European film, and it was shot over the course of almost an entire year at various historical you know real world historical locations around France, uh, with this all star French cast very much trying to be okay. So if we are imagining what the French equivalent of Marvel or Star Wars or this, you know, this this kind of American myth making pop culture stuff that's so popular right now is. What would that look like? And mm. evidently, the producers have, have, have said, "Well, it's going to be the Three Musketeers." Um, it is. I, I I really really enjoy this. I mean, of 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 the many Musketeers films that I've seen, this is this is among the very best because it does that thing of, it has that fun swashbuckly quality of the Richard Lester films, you know, with Raquel Welsh and everyone mm. from from the seventies, but it also has the the kind of real world grandeur of a Ridley Scott epic. And so you have, of course, the locations are a huge part of this. Um, you know, there's all these uh, lumpy faced extras milling around. There's wooden barrels piled in every corner. Nobody knows why. But, you know, just <laughs> loads of set dressing, loads of atmosphere stuff, smoke machines all on overdrive, lots of billowing <laughs> happening. You know, okay. in, the, in the forest, there's smoke. In a room, there's smoke. In a courtyard, there's smoke. Why is there smoke? Because it's the olden days. Okay, just enjoy it. Enjoy the texture and don't ask too many questions. So it it, it, it does that great thing of making it okay. So this is a really beautifully mounted film, but none of the none of the fuss and none of the epicness is getting in the way of telling this really propulsive swashbuckling story. Um, so I, I mentioned the all star French cast. So mm. you have uh, Francois Civil from Call My Agent, who was the son of Matthias. I don't know if you if you saw Call My Agent. Yes. This is the son who almost accidentally sleeps with his sister. Yes. Very French series. Um, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> So he plays D'Artagnan and he rides from Gascony to Paris to join the King's Musketeers. Okay. Within minutes of arriving, yeah. he has already teed up three duels to the death with uh, Athos, Porthos and Aramis, who are, of course, the, the, the three musketeers. Yeah. And here is a clip, I think, from the trailer, which which uh, depicts his uh, very uh, brusque arrival. D'Artagnan, vous êtes le fils d'Achille? Oui. Je rêvais comme lui d'enfiler la casac et de servir mon roi. Rejoindrai les cadets. Et un jour, peut-être, je serai mousquetaire. Excusez-moi, quoi, vous êtes où Vous voulez donc que je déclare la guerre aux protestants et à l'Angleterre oh, Ce sera intelligent que d'avoir peur. Votre éminence, il est dit. Buckingham et la reine vont enfin pouvoir se retrouver. So as we heard in that clip, uh, the three musketeers are played by Vincent Cassel, Pio Marmai and Romain Duris. The, the casting throughout this, you also have Vicky Kreps as Anne of Austria, the Queen. Uh, and, and Milady. And Milady is none other than Eva Green. It's so cool. Yeah, I mean, it's just, and the great thing is the way in which it's written is it's allowing these people, it's not just them turning up and saying, oh yeah, it's a so unfamous. Yeah. Um, it's it's they, they are actually able to give very decent performances wi- within the, the framework of this film, which is again why it's, it feels kind of Ridley Scott like because we're watching something that's done with real artistry mm-hmm. and real attention to uh, performance, rather than the kind of Marvel thing of like, well, look, let's CG a suit on them and have them kind of zapping around on the green screen. It just it doesn't feel like that at all. Um, Eva Green, don't want to sound sleazy, but. <laughs> This, it's the sexiest she's ever been. It's, it's 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 up there in maybe the top fifty sexiest roles she's ever played. Um, <laughs> she has okay. So the cleavage, the cleavage is a plot point. Oh my okay, goodness! Before I get too kind of deep into the cleavage, yeah, so to speak, it's oh actually goodness. it's like Mary Poppins's magical handbag. I mean, there are items, there are important items going in, there are important items being pulled out. Um, you know, again, there's this kind of it, it, it's not like particularly camp or even particularly lewd, but there's a kind of ease with the human body that is not necessarily seen in the the US equivalents, which is really kind of refreshing and satisfying and feels very kind of, you know, those 90s, noughties 
uh, big studio productions that I was kind of fortunate enough to grow up with, you're kind of like, oh yeah, this is fun when they do th- yeah. this kind of stuff. I mean, I keep a train ticket and a fiver occasionally in my bra. So what are we talking about with objects that she's pulling out of her? I mean, I, I, no, no spoilers. You'll have to wait and see. Um, <laughs> but but yes, it's it, 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 it's a multi-purpose cleavage. Um, anyway, moving on. Um, it, 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 yes, it, this, the script also does, is, is really nimble. So it sets up the historical context very, very cleanly. You know, you have, oh, there's the Protestants amassing in La Rochelle, which is potentially a foothold for the English. But the main tension is between the King's Musketeers and the, the evil forces of Cardinal Richelieu, mm. uh, who are, you know, so this is the kind of main conflict. There's this, when the duels are about to happen, then the Cardinal's troops descend. And so uh, there are kind of concessions to modern filmmaking in, in, in so far as, you have the the combat scenes feel a bit like the Revenant. There, there are these single take combat sequences where the camera is almost like being passed like a really baton between the different okay. characters. So someone's getting stabbed here, and someone's getting shot here, and then over to someone else, mm-hmm. um, and there's some sword fighting here, and it's it's all kind of stitched together very elegantly. Um, another concession to modernity, uh, Porthos in this version is bisexual. Mm-hmm. Not something I I mean, look, it wasn't in Dogtanian anyway. That's new. <laughs> Um, but it works very well. You know, yeah. it's kind of, they don't make a big thing. It, it's just, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, it's very beautifully handled. Um, but also, but, but, you know, it, it doesn't get lost in this stuff. It, it's, it's very traditionally mounted, very old fashioned in its own way and really, really good fun. Um, I hope people go to see it. I, I know French films in this country are generally seen as a kind of an art housey thing. This isn't art housey. It's also, it's a 15 and it's a 15 basically because of one shot in mm. which Athos wakes up next to um, a naked female body in his, in, in his bed, which has been kind of stabbed and, 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 and kind of graphically murdered during the night. How Game of Thrones does it go? No, no, not particularly Game of Thronesy. I mean, it's that's it. Right. And it, you don't actually see the, the stabbing happen because the mystery of where this body came from is a, is a big part of this, mm-hmm. this half of the plot. Um and it's a 15 and it should be a 15 because of this one shot. But otherwise, it is, I would say, towards the tamer end of 12A. It's, oh, it's, 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 you're not going to be see people being kind of graphically kebabbed okay. on these swords. It's, 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 it's much gentler than that and much, much more fun and much more propulsive. I'm very excited So I hope it does this. well. I, I don't know, but I would highly recommend. Thanks very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed making it. While you're here, check out all the other videos because they're cool too, aren't they? They are. And if you want to keep up to date with everything Kermit and Mayo's take, then check out our social channels. I mean, why wouldn't you? I mean, I I would. I have done. Excellent.